Wow, this is such a big puzzle. I wish I had somebody to do it with. I love puzzles. Can we do it together, please? <laughs> Consumer behaviors are always changing and your business needs to as well. Learn from micro puzzles and how they implemented a subscription component to an existing business. We can't wait for you to see their story. Hello, SEPTA community. We are so excited to have a special episode for National Puzzle Day. The holiday that you might not know have, has existed, but it does, and we are featuring a very special guest. We have Mike and Rachel from Micro Puzzles. Next to me, we have Nadine, and today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about their company, National Puzzle Day, and a special treasure that they have. So, to get us started, why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey into subscription. How did Micro Puzzles get started? Hey Jen, well, it started basically as a, as a side gig for us back in 2018. Uh, we had stumbled across um, uh, micro puzzles as just an idea. Um, and we, we sold a lot to like small gift shops, uh, small companies that had like, you know, little attractions and things that wanted to uh, put it. The great thing about puzzles is you can print anything on them. So they become a, something completely different. And uh, so most people love jigsaw puzzles. Yeah. We always did. Our online sales at first, we used to call them onesie twosies because that's how many we sold. Yeah, it was okay. just like a little sort of thing. So, so we, we really thought the direction of the company was going to go uh, towards like destination retail kind of thing. We're doing gift shops. Yeah. Um, and then and then the pandemic hit and everybody was stuck indoors. And um, we got on early on a local TV and we had like the sales just rocketed and the company really blew up and then yeah. uh, somewhere in when did we start i can't remember like august or something um basically rachel kind of was like you know we should do a subscription box and we were like wow, i don't even know what that meant i've never subscribed to anything i had no idea what that meant but i thought oh that sounds like something we should do and michael's like yes I think that you touched on so many things that our community is really experiencing thinking about i have an existing business model how do I get that recurring revenue or transition? And is it possible to layer in a subscription? You have to start somewhere, right? You, mm -hmm. you didn't quite have a strategy in place or know what was coming next, but you knew it was a big idea right. that you could capitalize on. And that is absolutely amazing. Originally, when we started the um, subscription box, everything had to be puzzle related sort of thing. Like we needed to find a puzzle thing and a puzzle this and all this yeah. stuff. And then we realized like if we go with just fun themes, we can do anything. So we can include like, you know, jelly bellies or a cookie or whatever kind of thing. There's there's fun little things that we can include that are not necessarily um, uh, not necessarily puzzle related, but can actually fit a theme. And that just opened the door to a whole bunch yeah. of other things. The great thing about puzzles is you can print them with anything. So we can literally match any theme. It sounds like your box has some amazing products in it. And I absolutely would have just thought it's a Right. Puzzle, which I love puzzles and I would have subscribed to anyway, but I wanted to take a minute to open one of your boxes. This is the year celebration box. Is that right? Yes. So micro puzzles basically are four by six, oh. 150 piece puzzles that we package in test tubes. That's so amazing. The labels That's actually cool. have a QR code on them, which is right there, uh, which customers can scan and it'll pull up a larger image on their phone, but it also allows us to give uh, a small paragraph and a backlink to a website if we're doing a custom puzzle. So it actually worked out well. Besides everything else, it also becomes kind of a promotional item. Mm -hmm. That one actually plays a song. So it was our happy birthday. It was our one year anniversary. Yes. And um, so, so when you opened it, it would play. That is a oh. great experience. Great. All right, so today we are talking about National Puzzle Day, and you have a little something something that we'd love to share. We were fortunate enough in 2020 to find one of the oldest existing puzzles uh, ever. It's actually it was created by a, a, a gentleman named John Stillsbury in the 1700s. He was a printer, and he basically created maps um, and then would mount them to mahogany wood and then just basically dissect them, cut them along the lines of the countries. That's they were crazy. used as uh, basically teaching tools, uh, okay. educational tools for nobility and royalty. They were really expensive. Um, they're, it's really expensive now, but they were really expensive <laughs> even back then. Um, and, uh, and so we were just so fortunate to have it. And yeah. we, we found it in Europe um, at, a, at a, deal, a really small dealer in Europe. And I, um, we were fortunate enough to have Ann Williams, who's a she's a puzzle expert, and she's written a bunch of jigsaw puzzle books. Early on, when we started the company, we reached out to her, 
Um, and she was super, she's just super nice, but she's the lady that Martha Stewart calls when she has a puzzle question. Um, she's amazing. And we had sent her photos and said, hey, Anne, crazy idea. This is what we're thinking of doing. What do you think? And she literally wrote back, I think the same day and was like, she was just like, Mike, Rachel, it's extraordinary um, what you found. And uh, it's, it's expensive, but not exorbitant. And she's like, I would, if I were you, I would jump on it. And so we did. And I, yeah, and Rachel was amazing. So because it was just kind of, hey, honey, I want to buy a oh. 255 year old puzzle. <laughs> I'm in the office, so there was no way for me to say no. I'm like, oh, that's great. And um, but, but we're really glad to have it, and we're really glad to be able to share it. So there's really only about a handful of these around. Uh, most of them, like Rachel said, are locked away in museums. So the British Museum uh, in England, the uh, Strong Museum in New York, which is the Play Museum, they, they specialize in toys and play. And apparently Princeton Uni University has one as well. Um, we're missing one piece. So I basically think that it might be in a 255-year-old couch somewhere, but <laughs> so be fine. that would be great. Yeah. Um, Princeton, I believe, is missing two pieces. And so we're missing different pieces. And so we're actually in talks with them right now to because to, um, we photographed every piece of our puzzle. And so we kind of want to create not a, necessarily a replacement piece, but we definitely want to show people that mm -hmm. you know, this is what the missing piece looks like. It's pretty small. Yeah. So. Well, we hope that you'll, you'll be able to get your hands on that and complete the puzzle. <laughs> now that you have it, I'd, we'd love to know more about how you've leveraged this extremely rare artifact to just grow or support your business. One of the reasons why we bought it actually is because, you know, we're a puzzle company. We really wanted to have, um, we have a pretty, it's a pretty big buy-in actually. Um, and we wanted to have something, you know, as a historic thing kind of thing, sort of just yeah. to really put us on the map. So you, I, I looked at your social and you've got a lot of engagement there. We've been talking with you over the last year and watching your growth on Facebook. You have an amazing community. You talked about more than 350 subscribers. What does success look like for micro puzzles? We literally used to glue puzzles in our kitchen. Like this started, we, I'm not even kidding. This is, we started really tiny. We had no budget. We've never, you know, we don't have a lot of huge investment. We just kind of keep uh, investing uh, profits into the company and growing it. So we started in an apartment and I mean, like, uh, and we basically have now a 2,500 square foot puzzle factory in Anaheim. Um, which is dedicated. And we, you know, when we first started printing, we could do five at a time, like, cause we custom print our, our puzzles. Mm -hmm. We could do five at a time. And so we, we have equipment now that allows us to do basically 140 or 150 at a time. Wow. Um, so the growth has been outstanding. We used to break, you know, we used to break up the puzzles by hand. Um, and now we have an automated uh, machine that does that, that we had custom specially built overseas. Um, but again, it kind of falls back to that 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 theory. Right. Um, we both worked at the Walt Disney Company, um, and Disney has a, a thing where they'll, they'll basically launch something at about 70%. Never has to be 100, they go 70, and they just figure they can tweak it and make it better. So I think really for success, we just want to continue to grow the company um, and basically, you know, have a bigger impact on, on, on people. So you've had an amazing journey and learned so much throughout the more than a little more than a year now that you've had the subscription model you touched on some lessons learned like proactive planning maybe <laughs> a collaboration incredibly yeah. important there's no rules yeah. do it all you know sure. try things mm -hmm. launch maybe before you're ready you know that's okay 70 percent is is good enough customer yeah. experience yeah vital is there anything else that you would recommend our community be mindful of as they're starting or growing their subscription lessons learned that maybe they shouldn't duplicate yeah, I would like to say, you know, it's like, oh, it's all about SEO and Facebook and <laughs> all these like really complex, you know, sort of things, but it's really not. It's really just launch it, get it out there. Yeah. Um, I, I actually, one of the things that I have found too, like if anybody asks, well, not anybody, but if people are asking for free boxes, if there's, you know, someone that wants to open your box and show it to their um, thing, like it's, it's nice to get out there because, yeah. you know, one person sees it and, yeah. you know, it, it can make a big difference. And that is actually a strategy we learned from Chris George and also Shopify LA and it's called product seeding and it has served us yeah. so well. That, I can't even tell that's you That's originally times. how we got on KTLA in um, Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, and we had a $16,000 day on our, at the beginning of the pandemic. So wow. we were, you know, it was big and it was just, we send product. Um, if you can't um, send a whole box to people, maybe send one item. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. kind of thing or one maybe your poor product or your um, 
uh, something something to basically um, get people excited about your yeah. your brand. Amazing! You guys have learned so much throughout your journey. Yeah, and since you launched your subscription component, you've just done so much growth. You've talked about a lot of things. I want to know, and we all want to know, yeah. what's next for Micro Puzzles. <laughs> Well, one, uh, we want to build our subscription. We, you know, Michael put a, a goal to say, you know, instead of doing the 350 that we're doing, let's, you know, try to get it up to a thousand. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to try to work towards that. We love being in uh, other subscription boxes, so we're always reaching out to that. So if anybody wants it in their subscription box, you reach out to uh, support at Micropuzzles. Uh, dot com and we can um, see about doing a custom for you and then we started um, a new product yeah so in 2022 Ooh. we're actually going to launch uh, tipsy puzzles which are going to be basically um they're packaged in uh they actually will be transparent beer cans like little tiny beer cans <laughs> That's so and, cool. and then also oh like God. a wine based one so That's we're going to go up and, yeah and the puzzles are actually square um so they'll, they'll be set up for like instagram and things like we're um we're wow. just kind of like playing with that iteration of it sort yeah. of thing. So we're super excited about having that. things a little you know a little more either wine or beer um related. a little more irreverent kind yeah of thing. it's gonna be it's gonna be really fun but you can also visit us at micropuzzles.com um anytime you can kind of see uh, we always have new designs we have custom puzzles um so we have uh we have uh, basically uh stock puzzles we have custom puzzles where you can actually upload your own photo and then also, also the subscription component as well where uh, you can get a monthly subscription uh, which starts at just 22 dollars a month that's yeah. amazing that is wow. great. I've learned so much today. Honestly, my mind is blown completely. I'm so ready to subscribe. <laughs> we have a team meeting next, and I'm going to go do this puzzle while yeah. we're doing that. This has been great. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Mike. Nadine, this has been a lot of fun. Have had Happy a National Puzzle yes. Day to the SUPTA community. We are so excited to see all of you at Sub Summit this June.